Hey, Chris Petrie here. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming by. I really appreciate it. We're going to have a fun time. We're going to have an exciting time here painting some beautiful flowers. We took some pictures around the house. Some of our bushes were having some beautiful flowers here blooming. Let's do them. They're pink. They're red. They look great with the green uh, complementary color. It looks fantastic. We'll take a look at the finished painting. So basically here we just um, we talked about how we did a preliminary sketch, which is a super light sketch first with pencil, just to get the idea of the closer flowers here. So these are closer to us. So these are larger flower shapes, larger flower petals. Then we also said when we were doing our preliminary sketch, let's get these distant flowers in smaller. So we made the flower shapes smaller and we put them over here in the distance. So they're a little bit further away. Once we captured that with our light pencil sketch, we went over and did a darker drawing over the top. We call that a contour drawing. Many of you are familiar with the contour drawing. It's basically just going over with a darker pencil line and also doing a little more detail on the flowers or whatever subject matter you might be doing. And then once we were done with that, we said, hey, why not? This was just really going to start out to be a drawing exercise with pencil or a pen. You could use pens, office pens. Any kind of pens you can find, you can use to draw flowers, any kind of subject matter for that, you know, for, for that uh, purpose. We're trying to practice our drawing skills, so this is basically a drawing video. But once we got done with the drawing, we said, hey, why not? Let's do some colors. Let's get some, some beautiful pinks and reds, flower colors, some greens um, for the uh, green um, leaf forms here throughout this uh, composition. So we did that, and we explain everything here on this video step by step, so you can follow along, take it at your own pace, pause when you want to, but you're going to have a fun time doing this painting, and look how wonderful that looks. It looks loose, it looks fun. We didn't sit here and spend four hours trying to draw this and, and, and paint this. We did it like within a half an hour, 45 minutes, maybe an hour tops. So come along with me here, join us all. We're all together here working on our watercolors, doing our drawings first, pencil drawing on this one, and then we just have some fun getting in some color for the flowers. And we explain to you how we did a little bit of a technique of trying to make it lighter and darker with the reds and the pinks so we capture that sunlight feel on these uh, petals and the flower shapes. Okay, so we'll be right back and uh, we'll start. We'll do our pencil drawing first. Okay, we've just uh, looked at the finished painting, so we're going to start with our drawing of these beautiful flowers here. These are um, some flowers around the uh, house, simple pink flowers. Let's let's do these. Let's make them easy, free, you know, flowing. We'll do a, a sketch first, and then we'll just put a little bit of wash on top of them, also, you know, just to make them look a little colorful and interesting. But these are just really a fun, this is a fun exercise, and we're really doing the drawing here. So this is really our drawing exercise. So we're just going to call this Drawing Flowers, and this is how we would do it. We can always take a drawing that we do and add some color to it, that's fine. So we'll see how it works out. We see absolutely a lot of greens here, so there's lots of leafy forms everywhere. And then there's some intermittent uh, pink flowers. You have these um, grouping of flowers here. They're closer to us, so they're a little bit larger. And then these in the distance here are a little bit smaller. And um, they look really beautiful, and there's some light across them, so we can capture that when we do our painting. So you, you will see that we can really create some beautiful light in these flowers, and we can create some beautiful colors, color combinations. This is a gorgeous green and red combination, which is a nice complementary color scheme. So we're going to do a lot of things here. But the main thing is we're drawing, we're practicing our drawing. So any one of us at any time, we can grab our sketch pad or even a, uh, some printer paper, whatever it is, a little small little sketch pad you might have, some printer paper with you. You might have some like a watercolor sketchbook pad, whatever it is. You know, you can take pictures, you can get pictures on the internet, you can take pictures yourself. I took these myself in the backyard. And um, all in all, it's just a matter of getting a good picture where you can kind of see some really flowers close up. You know, we kind of zoomed in on this. We're thinking like a photographer would think, you know, let's zoom into that subject matter 
uh, and you can see how we I did zoom in on this, and I cropped it in a little bit too. I took a wider picture, and then I cropped it in a little bit with the um, with my iPhone um, cropping uh, tool on the software on the phone. So you can crop in and shrink down your photos to make them more concise and more um, interesting, like this here. So you have more subject matter, the flowers, and you might crop out and kind of lose other like outside flowers that might be on the sides or other things above or below the scene. So you can kind of do your own cropping and making it the scene the way you want to by using that cropping tool in your phone or on your laptop or even on your iPad, whatever you might have, whatever you know devices you might have, your, fo your phone, your iPad, your home computer, your laptop, whatever you have, try to get involved with using some of that technology. Technology is an incredible thing on phones and laptops and everything like that. And I, I, I don't talk enough about that. You can use technology, your phones especially, like an iPhone or Samsung phone. There's all kinds of great phones out there. You can take these phones and do wonderful things with them. It's just a matter of uh, if you don't know how to really operate your phone so much when you're trying to take photographs and, you know, do um, changes to your photographs when you do have some photographs that you have in your files on your phone. You can simply go online on YouTube. Of course, YouTube is the greatest ever uh, application where you can go in and learn anything about anything. So you can go in and say, um, how, how do I adjust photos on my iPhone? Or how do I adjust photos on my Samsung? Or how do I adjust photos on my home computer or my iPad? Whatever you have. You could type that into YouTube and there'll be probably a hundred or two hundred or a thousand videos explaining how you can do this, how you can zoom in on your material. Let's say, let's say I, I do this now. I go in here and I say, all right, let me see some of my photos I took today. Let's do another one uh, here. Okay, I took this photo. How do I zoom in on it? Well, the first thing I do is I do a screen capture. So I, I close up like that. That's all I have to do, actually, is just zoom into it like that with my fingers on the screen. Zoom in and look at that. You can zoom in on a flower like this. And that's all. You don't even have to actually, there's no, um, there's no buttons to push. You just take your photo. You take a photo of some flowers along your um, shrubs and your where your, your home might be, or if you're out sightseeing, or even if you took a, maybe you took a, um, maybe you have a picture that you found online. You can save, save a picture from on, you know, from on the uh, internet. Once you save that picture, then you can just take it and zoom, and zoom in on it and say, all right, let's do this one. Let's take this beautiful flower and we could put it like that, or we could zoom it up like this right in the center. I would say it looks better like this. So that's how we can do that. So if you get familiar with your phone, your iPad, your home computer, whatever it is, yet maybe you have a camera, you know, use your, uh, use your technology. You'll find some great ways to actually make some incredible uh, paintings from your photographs. So let's try this. All right, so I have my pencil. I'm just going to start thinking about, all right, let's think about the preliminary sketch, which we always do first. Preliminary sketch is just... Let's kind of get things somewhat close to where we want it on the paper. And if we have a problem, we can always go in with a, uh, a kneaded eraser and erase a little bit and readjust it. So let's, let's think of it that, that way. So here we have some flowers over here. It's kind of like on the left side. So let's just do some... I'm just going to do this. Just going to do some, you know, flower shapes over here. Like so, like this. And just like this, and there I go. I have this grouping of flowers right over here, loosely, very lightly. You can barely see it, but I do have it on the paper, just like that. Then I come up here and say, all right, top of the paper up here, there's other flowers. Let's do these, like that, and let's do this one here. And there's another one here, very close to this one. And I'm just going to do the very basic 
shapes. Like that. There's a few more flowers over here. These look wonderful. They look beautiful. They're red and pink. You're going to have a great time putting some color onto your drawing. So we're going to do the drawing first, pencil drawing first, and then we'll do some um, some light washes of color. And we'll leave it real simple. We're not going to get too Okay, I did a super light sketch of what I'm seeing here. Now, um, this might be a good time for a break. We've been working seven minutes. This is a perfect time just to stop, actually. This way we kind of understand the process in steps or in like a procedural process of like one, two, three, four. So the first thing we did is we got our picture and we zoom, we, you know, we, we would zoom it in on our picture if we want to make it look a little more interesting versus leaving it like this. We zoom in. And then we say, okay, now I'm going to do this. And then here we have our rectangle. So we have our paper. That's our rectangle here. Then we say, all right, what's next? We're going to do a light preliminary sketch. And then we did that. We just outlined basic shapes of the flowers over here on the paper, lightly with a pencil, just lightly. And just, you know, doing a light representation of what we're seeing try to get it pretty accurate but not too fu fancy or too fussy right then once that's done these are some other leaves and leaf forms over here like these i'm not worrying about those too much but the main flowers are here and here right and then up here so i have those and then i did the same thing light preliminary sketch just kind of outlining a, a basic shapes and what you're seeing and then you kind of look at it and step back for a minute and say, oh yeah, looks good. I have the flowers up here. I have the flowers down over here on this side, up here, and there's some green leaf forms over here. And I just captured a few of those. Good to go, fine. We're ready to start doing our contour drawing, which is just going over it with a more definite, darker pencil line so that we're actually creating the exact flower shapes we want to. If you find that you did your first preliminary sketch and it looks good and you're happy with it, you're the artist. You can you can tell you can say to yourself, okay, Chris said do a preliminary sketch first, then we're gonna do a darker drawing over the top of it, a contour drawing. However, if you find that your light sketch, your first preliminary sketch looks good enough, then you don't have to do that darker um, drawing over the top of your preliminary sketch. You can just leave your preliminary sketch on there and say, you know what, it's good enough. I'm ready to paint. You know, maybe you'll go in and do a few little lines or something like that to maybe get some more definition on your flower shapes, like the petals of the flowers and so forth. You might want to do that. Or you can just paint those in. You don't even have to draw them in. You can actually paint them in. The uh, fine shapes and shadows and lights, forms on these flowers. It's up to you. You're the artist. When I share my ideas, I just share them as like a basic foundational idea of what we're trying to do. And then from there, you can take it your own direction. You don't have to follow exactly what I'm saying. You can give it your own spin, so to speak, or, you know, your own um, kind of take on things. Because you're the artist. Each one of you is completely different. I understand that. And that's why I never really try to say this is the right way or this is the only way. I don't do that because I realize all of you want to do your artwork maybe a little different. You want to do a little spin-off on what I do. That's all fantastic and perfect. Do it your own way, but just remember when I'm sharing you sharing with you my basic steps of how I do things, it's maybe just the way you might practice at first for like your first year. And then after a year, then you might say, you know what, I'm going to start doing spin-offs on what Chris is teaching me because I feel like I'm ready to kind of branch out and do my own my own thing. Maybe change things a little bit or do it my own way or just have maybe more of my own style incorporated into what I'm doing. That's all. So I don't mean to get preachy here. I apologize if I'm getting preachy or kind of, you know, you know, kind of maybe going into too much detail, but, but that's the basic fundamental thing I'm trying to share is follow my um, teachings first and my direction first. And then once you feel comfortable, then you can always take it in another direction if you want. That's the, that's fine. 
because we, we all have to find our own way in uh, the journey of watercolor. We're all on a watercolor journey. And we're all trying to find our own way, have our own ideas on our artwork, our paintings. You're going to find your own way eventually. You don't have to worry about it. Just practice with me first. Get the fundamentals down. And then you'll know somehow, some way, I know you're going to know the time when you'll, you'll start kind of branching out onto your own and doing spinoffs of what I'm doing or changing things the way you want to. But that comes with time. But in the beginning, it's better if you kind of follow my process first, and then you can break off and do some different things as you go, anytime you want, actually. But um, I always think it's good to have a real foundation of doing things a certain way, and that's, again, the preliminary sketch like we just did. We'll come back in just a second. We'll do the darker uh, contour drawing over the top of this preliminary sketch so you can kind of see how I go over the top of this with a darker pencil line with more details. And then after that, we'll just add a little bit of a wash to it, a little bit of paint. All right. We'll come right back in just a second. Thanks for watching. Okay, and we'll, we'll be right back. All right, so we're getting we're getting back started here, and as I promised, we're going to go in and do um, the darker contour drawing over the top of this light preliminary sketch. Again, the preliminary sketch is just to get your flower shapes here in the general area that you want them to on your. This is kind of like a square, somewhat of a rectangle, but it is a little. It's more it's more of a square, but it is a little bit. It's a little bit longer than it is wider. It's so vertically, it's a little bit taller. And a little bit thinner this way, but it is, it's almost like a square actually. So let's continue on here. I'm going to start, maybe I'll start right down here on the bottom, and I'll just start going in and doing the flower shapes here. And uh, let's do it this way here. So I'm just going to do some flower shapes, and I see the And I try to, I'm doing the contour drawing, so I'm actually looking at the subject matter carefully as, as I can. And then here, and if it's a little bit different than what you did earlier, no problem. Again, essentially your preliminary sketch, that first really super light sketch, is just to get the things in your picture frame correctly so that it looks somewhat in the place you need it to be, the same areas on the uh, canvas or on the um, on the on the watercolor paper. Okay, and there we go. And now we're off to over this side over here. This is some greens, so I'm not going to do too much with this. I'm just going to kind of do some very light suggestions of some. Uh, green leaf forms. And then over here I can see the stems coming up and then we're going to do some small flower shapes there and then over here like that. And then over here we have this one. Quite beautiful. This one here looks like a perfect flower that must have bloomed. And over here underneath there's another flower shape there. And then there's another green, there's some green leaf forms there. I think I'll denote that my green leaf forms are the ones with the uh, veins in them, like so. Like that, just to help me remember these are the green leaf forms here. And then here, there's some more flower shapes. like 
like this. Okay, and then over here, this beautiful flower over here is in bright sunlight. Somehow the light is just catching this one really powerfully. So we're going to try to do that when we put some wash on there. And uh, like that. And then uh, for this one here, this goes that way there. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And again, it doesn't always come out perfect. You're going to find that once in a while you'll have something look really good with your drawing. And then other times you might find that there's some other things that are not looking 100% the way you'd like them to. Don't worry about it. Okay, so I'm just doing some interesting uh, leaf forms here, like this, and uh, maybe over here too, there's a few leaf forms there. Like that. Maybe a few smaller leaf forms there. And again, I, I'm making my leaf forms the green leaf forms, I put those little small veins in the leaves just so I don't mix them up with the flowers, which are the pink pink flowers here, the red and pink flowers. Okay, so that is really the basics of it. I did the, again, the, the first preliminary sketch just to get everything in the right spot, like so that I captured that these grouping of flowers up here are up here, up there. Then down here on the left side, I wanted to make sure I got this grouping of flowers here, larger. They're actually larger looking, so everything looks enlarged. The leaves are large, you know, the, or the petals are a lot larger because they're closer to us. Can you see that? Does that make sense? So these flowers here, the petals are a lot larger on the flowers. And then here, the petals are a lot smaller on the flowers because they're further away. So we're looking at the bush. Here, this part of the bush where the flowers are, is closer to us, so these flowers look a lot larger. And then these here are further, a little bit, maybe five feet away, four feet away, you know? And they're smaller, you can kind of see the flower shapes are smaller. So that's a real good, really good dynamic. If you can get that in your drawing and painting, it's, it's gonna look a lot more beautiful. It'll give it a, a, a dynamics to it, like close-up flowers, close-up flowers, further away flowers, further away flowers, smaller. And then, of course, we're going to capture some color, some greens, some pinks and reds, you'll see, and some light. We'll capture some light shining on these petals of the flowers. You'll find that this is going to be a really beautiful painting. But the thing I wanted to mention is just in itself, if you can do this, just draw these, have fun drawing these type of scenes, and you don't have to actually paint them. I figured let me paint this because, you know, why not have a little fun, bust out the paint set, right? <laughs> so... It's always fun to you know take out our watercolors and paint on our, our sketches when we're done. But you could do this in ink. You could do this in a, in a uh, with your pen. You could do this as a drawing, just a regular pen drawing in a sketchbook or on some printer paper, wherever you are. You could take a picture of this and then just do a quick drawing of it. So this is really a drawing video, and I'm going to call it a drawing video. I'll label it drawing video. This is pretty much it. This is the drawing. Now... We'll just take it to the next level. We'll put a little bit of watercolor wash on it, but we're not going to make this like a painting video where we'll take another hour to do the painting. I'm just going to put on a little bit of wash to make it look a little interesting, okay? So I hope uh, you'll like this and enjoy this video. And I always mention, too, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, and also, too, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe right on the right-hand side down below here. There's that subscribe button. All it does is just it alerts you the next time you open up YouTube. You'll see my video um, at the top of your list of things to watch. So, you know, if you like my videos and you want to follow along, perfect way to do it is just hit the subscribe button. This way you don't lose me and you can keep following along. And I, I really appreciate that, too, that you're interested in watercolors and you want to learn to draw and paint in watercolors. We do everything watercolor here. So don't ever worry. As long as you're following along each week and doing the paintings and drawings that we're doing here on YouTube, on my channel, you will learn watercolor without a, without a doubt. You will become better at it. 
and I have many, many, many students that are on my channel that are sending me pictures over the years, over the last three, four, five years, they're sending me beautiful paintings. I can't even tell if they're my paintings or their paintings. They're doing such a great job. So trust me, my methods and techniques in watercolor color really work. You'll have a great time doing it, a lot of fun. Just remember in the beginning, it's going to be tough. So if you get, don't get, you know, don't get worried. If you're just starting out, it's your first couple of weeks or your first couple of months. It takes a couple of years to get used to it, to watercolor. It does take a couple of years to get used to watercolors, no question. But once you get used to it and you do it all the time, you practice with it here, practice with this here every week. That's all I'm saying is if you're practicing every week with us, you are going to get better and you'll see that your paintings are going to look so much better week after week, month after month, and year after year. And eventually, you'll just be doing beautiful paintings without a problem. won't be difficult. But in the beginning, you always know watercolor is a tough, difficult medium. So in the beginning, you don't worry about it and, and throw your paintings out the window and your brushes and your paints out the window. Don't get frustrated. Just remember, it does take a long time. So don't worry. Don't worry about it. Just stick it out. Practice week after week with us here and you will get better. I guarantee it. You'll see improvements all the time, okay? All right, so we'll come right back and we'll do a little bit of wash on this just to show you how you can add a little bit of color to your drawings and it'll look wonderful. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, we are back and I'm having a sneezing attack. Hopefully it has ended. And uh, first thing I'll do is um, I will, I will put down this paper and I'll take my palette like so. We have to make sure that we clean our palette. Let's not start mixing colors on something like this. Simple as pie, look at that. A, a Holbein spritzer bottle or any spritzer bottle. Someone left a great comment on the comment section how you can use like, um, uh, hair care products. Sometimes hair care products might have, you buy it, you use it for your hair, for maybe some uh, hairspray or other things like that, and then you can just fill it up with water when it's done, and you can use it too. So you could save a little bit of money, and you don't have to buy a, a new uh, spritzer bottle. You can use something that you might have around the house. Once you're done with some cleaning products or hair care products, whatever. Works for me. I do the same thing too. I use all kinds of stuff at home. In my studio, I try to reuse and repurpose things all the time. So, I'm totally on board with that f very nice person that left that comment about using and repurposing hair care products or whatever. You can use those too, as well. So let's uh, make sure we clean our palette first before we start, and then we'll just take that and we'll put it here. And I'll zoom out just a little bit. Let's see if we can get that in there. Okay. That looks good. So, first thing I do is I usually use a little bit of tape and just tape down my palette so it doesn't move around while I'm on camera here. That would not look great. So if you're making your own YouTube videos or you're thinking about making your own YouTube videos, it's really important to tape down Tape down your, um, whatever your, your paper or your palette, whatever it is, tape it down so it doesn't move around because that looks really unpleasant if you're watching a video and there's stuff kind of like sliding around and all that. So now this is nice and good. You know, it moves a little bit, but it's at least it's, it's not going to shift around too much. So that's good. And we'll take our spritzer bottle again too, and we will spritz our paints just a little bit. That's all. And we're going to use just a simple, uh, let's see what brush we're going to use. Let's use our Simply Simmons number six. So this is more of an uh, extreme beginner's type of brush, but you can use any brush. And it doesn't really matter if you're just starting out. And it's your first time ever here on my video, on YouTube here, on my tutorials. Welcome. I thank you so much for coming by for the first time, and I'm hoping you'll stick with us and keep coming back. And uh, those of you that are, have been here a while, you know, thank you again for tuning in on another uh, beautiful, um, fun time we're having here with some flowers. And again, the main 
uh, focus was dr drawing these flowers, just drawing. You could use a pen, pencil, whatever it is. But now we're just going to kick it up a little bit. We're going to kick it up another notch and just add a little bit of color to it just so you can have a little fun with it too if you want. And that's really just simply, let's take some red here. This is kind of like the red that I'm seeing there with maybe a little bit of purple. A little bit of purple there and a little bit of red. And we'll just make a nice range. And then we can make darker. Here we can get, get a little darker, just make make a little bit more, less water, more paint here. Like that, Let, you know. Maybe a touch of some purple in there too. Like that, so maybe you have a little purple. We could add a little bit of uh, dynamics to our colors, like that. But we definitely want to add some darker red here. And then over here, this is a lighter red, more water. So you just have to remember, if you want some darker, more darker color in your flowers, you're going to have straight paint, pretty much. If you want lighter looking washes where it's really light pink, you would just have more water and less paint. That's all you have to remember. And then now let's just go in and have a little bit of fun. We're not going to take a lot of time here. Let's just do some uh, fun uh, washes on this. So here we're going to do, we're going to, we'll do this right here. You can kind of see that, right? And we just do that. We add some wash on there. And then if we want to make it a little bit darker here, we just go into the straight, into the paint like that. Straight right into the red here. And we can do that. And we can do the same thing. We could take straight red over here like that, like there. And then you can start adding some darks where you see the darker reds. And you can just start adding them in. And then once they start to dry a little bit, then we can start lighting, you know, making them lighter and working the washes out and making them lighter. So that's another technique you can use is just getting your darks in like so. Right? We'll try to get some of those darks in like so. Like that. And I'm just following the, the dark and lights of the photograph here. Then I just take my um, clean, fresh water. Now I have a tissue in hand. And then now I dry off the brush. I rinse the brush off and then dry the brush off and take the water off the brush so that it's just a damp brush now because I've taken off a lot of that water that's dripping off the hairs of the brush. Now I just have a damp brush and now you can just start, start to smooth out that wash like so. Can you see how I'm doing that? Like that? And that gives you that beautiful look of light dark and light with light and shadow and then here this is really light there like that this one here is somewhat light like that and it doesn't have to be perfect as long as you can kind of get the basics of it and there we go you can work that out a little bit Like that. There we go. There we go. And then over here, same thing. And I'm going to add a couple splashes. You don't have to do this. If you don't like splashes, don't do them. 
I like splashes. I try to splash. It makes it like fun, not too serious. Actually, actually adds to the dynamics of the painting. There's more interesting things that you can look at in the painting. If if you add some splashes, people will look at the splashes and kind of maybe be a little mesmerized by them and say, "Ooh, look at that! That's cool. That looks interesting." Okay, there we go. Then I'll mix up some greens up here. So I'm mixing up some greens up here. I hope you can see that. Um, I'm trying to keep the painting zoomed in a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll just... Add some greens, just here and there. I might add a little bit of pink over here and red, just to kind of mix up the colors a little bit. And I might just leave it like a silhouette, so I'm not going to get too worried about it. I'll do a little bit of painting there. There we go. And you have some fun with this. Nothing to worry about. Have a good time with your watercolors. I'm just doing these leafy forms quickly because they're really, they're sort of like the part of the painting that we're not really too focused on. We want to get the red flower, red and pink flowers really looking good. And I'll just mix around some colors like that. And I'll tap in some pinks here and there, just to give a little bit of color to the greens. Mix it around a little. Nothing worse than colors that are just one or two, you know, one or two variations on a color. So if I'm going with green, I'll try to add the dark green, the medium green, a little bit of yellow, make some yellow up here. So that when I'm doing my leaf forms over here, and then a little bit of this green over here, like a viridian green, try to get lots of variation in your greens when you're doing these leaf forms here. And then even after you're done with that, then you go and even take some splashes of pink and get some pink in that green so that it kind of harmonizes the whole painting. Does that make sense? So instead of just leaving things like cut off and pasted looking with color, so if you can imagine how Things look kind of odd when you just cut and paste colors on things. Like if you just draw something and you kind of just leave it plain in one color. Let's take lots of colors, mix them around the painting, and uh, that's going to look better. Maybe I'll just go with some yellow here. Like that. Maybe I'll take some more yellow. Add some there. And again, here we're adding some fun colors, just to kind of show that you can have a lot of fun drawing first with pencil, and then I'll put a little bit of green over here just to tie in the green idea. Okay, now let's we'll keep working. Let's come up here and let's just get some of that darker dark in there like so. And a little bit more there and over here. And then we'll let that sit for a few minutes 
and we'll just come over here and we'll do the same thing. We'll just get some flower shapes going over here, like you can see here. And then here you can see there's a lot of light on some of these. So let's try to make these similar to the picture. Let's leave lots of light on these petals of these flowers. So we're going really light, almost hardly any color. Maybe there's more darker colors in the center of the flower here. So we could add some darker colors in the center of the flower, like so. And there's also some darker red and purple, maybe even too. Under here, and then under this area here, but over here it's lighter. And there's some greens over here, so I'll just put some greens over there, so. So I definitely hope you're having fun with this. And again, you can kind of see, I'm just. Having a good time here. That green didn't look good. I'm going to rinse off my brush and pick up some of that pink color. And I can go around this flower with some greens and then splash a little bit there. Maybe I'll add some blue. This is where you can get a little creative, add a little bit of blue, maybe. A couple of spots here and there, add some of that blue, that cerulean blue kind of look. Like that. There you go. And I think you will see that we have had a lot of fun. We haven't fussed around too much and taken too much time, right? We're kind of moving through this rapidly. Again, if you're moving fast, that means you're 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 painting loose. If you're if you're if it's fast, it's going to be loose. I know many of people that have mentioned to me, Chris, how do I paint loose? Fast is loose. If you can just kind of work your painting pretty quickly, rapidly, get into a rhythm of it, kind of like music. If you get into a rhythm and you're dancing, you know, you're kind of moving to the beat. Same thing with uh, with artwork. If you can get your painting sort of like going to a rhythm in your mind, you're thinking, I'm just going to go through this and get it done. I'm not going to fuss around. You'll see that it will look like it has a rhythm to it and a uh, really nice, um, pleasant looking uh, quality to your painting. So there's another flower there. And again, I'm just not going to get too worried about it. Sorry if I'm making a lot of banging noises on my uh, on my uh, water bucket. Sometimes I make too much noise. I realize it probably might bother you. I'm sorry about that. I have to learn how to maybe put a cushion on my uh, water pail or something so that it doesn't make that irritating sound. And if you have some something that goes wrong, you can just blot it up with a tissue. Like that. And I'm trying to get some greens in here. And this is another bit of uh, red over here. There's a flower over here. Like this. So that's another flower there. If it gets out of control, you can blot it up with a tissue. Go in and get straight paint like that, like this, and there we have it. We have a fun painting. You didn't um, fuss over too much, right? We just had some fun here, some greens. Some splashing, then we smooth out the wash over here.
that. There you go. We've kind of just mixed and mingled our colors around the page. We added a little bit of that fun cerulean blue look color right there with some splashing. You can add that cerulean blue into some of your flowers. Like so. Like that. If you can mix in some other colors, if you kind of feel like you need to add a little more color, I uh, added some of this, this cerulean, it looks like cerulean blue or peacock blue or maybe, yeah, it's, it's either a peacock blue or a um, cerulean blue kind of a look. And if you can, you know, you can add that into your greens too as well. And uh, I'm allergic to something right now. I'm sniffling. I'm sorry. And there we go. So that is basically the fun of just going in. You're doing a composition, not, not so much a finished painting. You're just drawing some pencil drawings of some flowers. And then you're just saying, you know what, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to add a little bit of color to these flowers and just have fun and try to just recreate those lights and darks, like darks and lights. So we have some lights and some darker darks of the reds and pinks. So I tried to capture that up here too. So lighter pinks up here and then darker pinks in here. And you can add more straight paint here, here and there. Just go right in and grab straight paint with no water. And you can add that to your painting like so, here and there. You can rinse off the brush, dry off the brush, and you can maybe just slowly sort of smooth out that wash if you add some darker, just straight paint. Take that straight paint and just kind of smooth it out into the other washes that you have on the paper. Just a little bit, not too much. Don't, you don't want to go too far out with it. You want to kind of leave that light and dark look of the tonal values. And there we go. If you need to add a little more greens. Here we go. You can blot up a little bit of paint if you want to lighten it up. Over here, you might want to add a little bit of red. Maybe even a little bit of a flower over here. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this. We're going to be back for another video, and before you know it, we'll be you know creating another wonderful, fun uh, tutorial. But for this one here, main thing was kind of get the drawing in with the pencils, or you can even do this in a pen drawing. I mentioned that too. If you have your uh, Uniball uh, Vision Elite pen or any other office pen that you have, is fine. You can use Sharpies. Um, there's other office pens like this, any kind of pen you can find, black black pens, you can get a drawing in like this of your flowers with a pen, let it dry, and then you can also do a little bit of uh, light wash over the top of your pen, pen drawings. But I did do this in pencil, I'm hoping you enjoyed the pencil drawing portion of this. And then you can even go back into it once it's starting to dry, and you can add more pencil lines once you're... Uh, once your, uh, once your paint starts to dry, you can actually go in and do a couple pencil lines here and there to get a couple stems in there, a couple of uh, stem forms and things like that. 
Okay, we are going to see you on the next video. Thanks for coming by. I really appreciate it. And thanks for all the great comments, the uh, wonderful insights that you have that you put into the comments section. It's all appreciated and everyone learns from it. So whenever you're leaving comments, always remember people are going to read those comments and learn from them. So if you're giving some ideas on what you're learning, how you're doing your paintings, what kind of techniques you're learning about and what how things are going, maybe something that went wrong and you learned to change it in some way or whatever it is, when you're leaving comments in the comment section, always remember I greatly appreciate it and so does everyone else. You know, everyone else does too because everyone else is learning from all these comments that we have in the comment section. And I thank you so much for coming in and putting comments in our comment section of each video that we create, because that really does help all the other artists out there that are coming up through the ranks and learning. Some of you have many years of experience now uh, in watercolor, so you're leaving your great wisdom and uh, knowledge with uh, us here on the comment section, and everyone else can learn from it. So um, we'll see you on the next video, everyone. Thanks again for coming by. We I really appreciate it, and I also appreciate that you thumbs up and also subscribe too if you haven't and um, we'll see you on the next video okay we'll talk to you soon bye bye